Let's talk about sharpening for a minute. Gotta be quick about this because there's a wasp making a nest in the log that I'm sitting next to here. So, let me get all this out of the way. I recently got asked um, how, how I get a, such a mirror polish on my knives. You see that? When my hands shake like they do. I freehand sharpen everything. So this is the stone that I use. I clean it with a little bit of this on a rag because it will it will get loaded up really quickly. So just take the rag and I, I just a touch of that oil and I wipe that down. On one side's 400 grit diamond, on the other side, no idea. Some very smooth ceramic thing. Um, I use this primarily to get the apex of my knife the right way. So learning time, apex. So this is your blade. You're looking at it straight down the handle. We got a nice Scandi grain going on here, sort of, or a double chisel grain. It's not Scandinavian per se, but if you if you had a, you know, a chisel shape like this, where you got the flat side and then you've got a angled side, uh, just pull that over, and there you go, Scandi grain. So it's not. I guess you could call it a. Everyone calls it a Scandi grain. Let's be honest. But the idea of sharpening, if you get a, a, a nick in that in that blade, suddenly you got a, like a rough edge on there. The idea, and one reason why I don't like Scandi grinds a lot, is then you've got to remove all of this material here. And if you want your blade straight, your tip straight, you got to remove all of all of this material over here. So you got a lot of removal to do to get that Scandi grind back. And then, of course, once you do, you got the you've removed that material on those sides and you got your point back, right? Ah, Ta-da, your blade's sharp, sort of. It will have a burr. A burr is just a little flimsy piece of steel that has been sitting on that edge, flexing back and forth as you're rubbing a stone up against it. So you rub it here and that little, that little burr pokes off to that side. Now you could touch this with your finger. You can feel that curled burr right there. So you take your stone, you rub it on that side and now that burr's pointed over in that direction. And Great, you've got a very, very sharp edge underneath that burr, but you still gotta get rid of that burr. And the way you get rid of that burr is like the same way you get rid of any piece of metal sticking off a thing, is you gotta flex it back and forth until it falls off. It'll essentially just pull off. And you do that with a strop. Now these two things right here is what I most of the time I carry with me out in the out in the woods because nothing sucks more than getting a, a nick in the, in the edge of your blade right where you want to use it, and then suddenly you've got to finagle around that, that nick. And so, if that happens, you, I use a stone, and probably use this side, the 400 grit side, to reestablish the apex. The apex is that tippity top point right there. And then you use the strop to get rid of whatever burr is, is on that piece of metal. And that is essentially how you, sharp, you sharpen a knife. Now, my hands shake. And I still, I freehand sharpen everything. Um, I just gotta be, I can use the shake. So I'll, typically what I'll do, let me get all this crap out the way. Typically what I'll do, go away, is I will take the blade and I'll put it down onto something like this so that it's it can't move. I will stay as close as I can to the blade to minimize the shaking that's gonna goof up my, my angle over here. And so what I'll do is then I'll, I can use that shaking to kind of vibrate the stone like that. And that, I'm not gonna do it because it's freshly sharp and hair popping, shaving sharp blade here. But I, I run it back and forth like that, just kind of using the shaking in my hand to, to help me do the work. And then I just turn it over, not throw it, I turn it over like this, and I do the other side. Now to get the tip, I'll put this down and I will hold this very carefully and I'll run that tip in one direction over that stone. But I don't hold it out. I use major muscles instead of smaller muscle groups because the bigger muscles shake less. And I run that back and forth. And sometimes I'll, I'll spend an hour sharpening this knife. But the results are great. And then I've got several different stropping instruments. At one point, I put um, some kind of polishing compound in the back of this pleather case, but it doesn't stick, and I didn't like it because then that rubbed off onto my other gear, and that was no fun. So I made these kind of things. This was the first drop I ever made. This was the second, and uh, what I did was I just took, I bought a strip of aluminum, aluminum, leather, glued it here with wood glue, and I did it both sides. So you've got the fuzzy part of the leather, 
and I use the white compound on there. And then you've got the other side of the leather, which is hard like the outside of this thing. And I used it on that. And the, this, the thing with sharpening though, especially stropping, is, let me get you in here, lads. When you put your blade on there, that leather flexes. Can you see that right behind the edge? That leather flexes. And what that does, bring back our old drawing here. So you got your strop here, your, your piece of leather, and, we're, and this is like zoomed in really good. And then you put your, your knife blade up against it. And what happens is the, this is, this is a knife right here, just trust me, it's a knife. It's, yeah, yeah, anyway, so you put that up there and what happens is this material, this leather, it gives slightly. And what happens at the tip of that is it goes down like that. And so then that edge, your angle changes right here. So as that material flexes, it kind of pulls around your, it, come out of here. So what happens, that leather kind of pulls around it and it changes the angle of the blade. Say, so this is your apex and, and this right there is 12 degrees or 17 degrees or 20 or whatever. When you push that tip into the leather and that leather kind of deforms around it, this corner here, that little triangle right here, changes the angle of your blade. So instead of having a 20 degree, you have now got a 40 degree. And this is why a lot of people, when they strop, it feels like their knife gets duller. So instead, so you get your, your blade here with your Scandi grind, but then at the tip of this Scandi grind, we'll zoom in here, those edges come together like this, right? These are 20 degrees. And then because of that flexing around the strop, you now have an edge over here that has a micro edge on it. It's what it's called, oh, go away, B. This right there, and that's not a very good drawing of that. We'll let me do this a little better. Shaky, shaky, I told you. Suddenly you've got this sort of a thing. And it's, it's, this is the apex. The tip of your edge is now changed from 20 degrees to 40 degrees, which is not very good. If you're gonna split wood and chop, that, that sure, fine, that's never gonna break. But that's why it feels duller. It went from popping sharp at 20 degrees to what, like hair popping sharp, to what is this now? 40, 50, it's, it's, that's why a lot of people feel like when they sharp, they strop, they get a duller tip, because essentially you're rounding off the tip of your, your blade here. So yeah, that apex is now no longer 20 degrees, it's shaped like that because that strop worked the material that was here and got rid of it for you. Congratulations, Merry Christmas. So that is why I started doing this. I'd take the stropping compound or the honing compound, polishing compound, and I'd put it on something that didn't flex. So when I put my blade on there, tilted it to the right degree, I know that's not going to flex and change the angle of my of my blade. Now this is, is pine. It still flexes, but it's way way different than than leather. And voila, you have uh, some kind of stropping mechanism that doesn't um, doesn't change the angle of your blade. Or you compensate for that with how you strop. Instead of going right at 20 degrees, turn that blade slightly away from the leather and go that way or or lighter pressure but that's that's how we do it and you notice all of my blades have a mirror edge on them from this uh Schrade whatever 1095 blade got our bps knife here um this is my favorite i'm gonna change the handle to cherry wood but it's dusty, but it also has a, a nicely polished edge. And the reason why I, I do that, this is my brand new Mora Carbon. Um, the reason I, I do that is because it takes less force to push a shiny edge through wood 
than it does to make to push a rough edge through through wood. That's everybody can kind of figure that out and get a feel for it when you're making feather sticks or slicing or carving. That shiny edge is just going to slide through the wood and split it and move it out of the way much better than a than a rough scratchy edge because those scratches will will grab onto pieces of wood and then keep it and bind to it, uh, pulling it along. So you end up with a uh, what, what am I doing here? You end up with <laughs> with a blade that cuts poorly even though it could be hair shaving sharp so anyway i'm i'm making a new couple strops here but these ones are going to be slightly different than that i'm putting some some diamond stropping compound on there what i did is i just took two pieces of wood liquid nails um, pushed them together so i got one strop and two strops and piece two pieces of wood and i separated them with a piece of um grocery bag and that's these things have been clamped down here for almost three days I'm gonna pull it off and apply the diamond compound to it this stuff I just got it off uh, Amazon for really cheap so that that hardened I, I, I purchased the leather too this leather is, is really thin and I wanted it thinner so it had less less squish to it less flex so anyway that's how I do it and that's how I, I shine with a with shaky hands. I don't I don't use a machine typically. Freehand sharpening is, is difficult, but you got to work around and with your strengths, uh, around your weaknesses and with your strengths. And that, that's it. It's just one of the things I've lived with for a long time. The military helped it get much worse. Um, and the harder I try to control it, the more it shakes. So I just have to calm down, relax, and attempt to not force things, but just go with how things are going to go. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, guys. Uh, that's that's me. That's how I do it. You do you. Uh, only experience can really tell you what what kind of what you want to do when you, with your equipment. And uh, yeah, I love your faces, and I will see you guys on the next adventure. Bye.